Hey YouTube, welcome to UniX TCG, and today we're going to have another game of One Piece set in the OPO2 format, and we're going to have a pretty good time. So uh, with that being said, I do want to thank everybody who helped contribute for the overhead rig for the camera setup. Um, we have reached our goal, and that is an amazing thing. Couldn't have done it without you guys. And so uh, anything put up from here forward when it comes to One Piece, Dragon Ball, Super, uh, in the future Battle Spirits, we'll have that overhead rig for better stability. So I'm going to be making better videos, and it's thanks to the people that love those videos. So thank you very much. Um, past that, I do want to say that if you want to join the Unix fam and help support future videos, all you got to do is like the video, uh, hit that subscribe button so we keep growing as a channel, hit the notification button so you never miss a beat, and comment on the video to let me know your thoughts and whatnot. And uh, we're going to just keep on going. There's a Discord in the description if you want to join and talk to everybody. We got a lot of stuff going on. Pl pl plenty of people share decks, ideas for multiple games. Uh, we have a buy, sell, trade channel. And so, well, for each game. And then we even talk about things like gotchas. Like, there's just a lot of coolness to be had there. So, yeah. With that out of the way, let's actually hop into the uh, games. And then after the games, I'm going to have a word from our sponsor so you know where to get these cards if you so choose. So, let's hop into it. So, here we go. We actually have Whitebeard versus Kinnaman. I roll a one-sided number on two-sided die, and he rolls a one-sided number on two-sided die, but it's the only one that can be higher than me. So, he's going to be able to choose. Um, a good player is going to make Whitebeard go first so that he has more times where he has to use his effect to lose his life. Um, and then uh, he just goes second to be able to make powerful foreign momentum like Okiku. Um, he decides to keep his first hand, whereas I decide to mulligan because uh, I don't see Moby Dick, if I can remember correctly. But the mulligan was pretty awful like i am playing white beard but instead uh this gave me vanilla beard <laughs> um little hint people have been asking for my list my list only runs three and three of the vanillas of king Dew and atmos but uh i actually drew like two atmos and a king Dew in here and then i'm gonna draw into like another king Dew momentarily if i'm not mistaken so we're gonna start off by playing one dawn and then uh taking a life that's why going first is so detrimental to whitebeard because you literally do nothing but you still take life um he is going to put his two dawn into play and activate kinaman's effect to reduce the cost of land of auto instead of Kiku, one of the favorite plays of kinaman so now i get to go up to three dawn and we're at a point where it's now a problem i see i have two bartholomew uh blockers in hand but I can't play anything because Okiku will tap it and Kinnaman will swing on it. So I just have to swing for 8k, apply the pressure. We have to figure out how we get rid of the Okiku. I'm going to take a life for ending my turn and pass. So he gets to go up to 4 Dawn now. Weighing his options, I have a clear field and so I mean he wants to build up his field as much as possible so that when I have 0 life he can just push for game. So he activates Kinnaman's effect and plays another Okiku. If I didn't think I was going to have options now, I definitely have options later. So he's going to swing for Okiku. Um, I can't just start taking hits knowing that his field is going to start going so far up. So we do combo with the Bartomeu. I mean, he was going to block on the field in normal matches, and all he blocks from hand here. Um, we just drop the Rakuku. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, whatever that is. The, the Rakuyo. Yeah, there we go. So we got the Rakuyo. And then uh, we're going to end up drawing, going up to 5 this time. And here we're going to Okiku on the, uh, well, Otama on the Okiku. And then we're going to swing on the Okiku, 6 into th 2. Yep. Or sorry, 6 into 3. So he decides that's way too much. He would have to combo up to 4k. Then we're going to tap 4, and we're going to play one of our 4 Vanillas. Um, it's kind of a risky move with Okiku and so much Dawn going in, but I feel like the forward momentum, he has to try to press it, and I can at least protect this Atmos for one turn. And if we can get it out till next turn, then we can at least have some sort of presence on the board to start swinging. So you have so many cards in hand, I say four. We're getting very low on hand, and our board presence is not that good. We haven't seen a Moby Dick, we haven't seen a Marco, so this is becoming quite perilous. So 
So he's gonna activate uh, Kinemon's effect, <laughs> playing Izo in order to swing on Atmos. All right, to tap Atmos. So now he's gonna swing on Atmos for six while tapping my Kiku. Um, I have to combo out of this, as you can see. Like I literally, yeah, I'll just combo with a King Dude to go up to seven. Because we have way too many vanillas in our hand anyway. We still have two more left. I'm telling you, Vanilla Beard OP, JK though. Um, so at this point, he has to decide whether he wants to, again, progress his field or end up playing into that. So this time, he's going to go with Keenaman to swing it into uh, my Atmos for eight. And this sucks because while I do want to keep it, I get Radical Bean, yeah, I have to Okiku, I'm sorry, Otama and a King Do. <laughs> so at this point, we are sitting at two cards in hand. Two or three. Let me see. But we have a Radical Beam and we have a... Did we just draw our first? Okay, yeah. So we're going to swing to make sure we kill the Okiku. Um, 9k into 5k to make sure that goes off. Um, I see a Radical Beam and a Guard Point in hand. So I'm going to swing for 8k at Leader. There was one foil in there. I'm not sure if it's a Jozu or if it's a uh, Marco, but I think if I had the Marco, I would have played it. So I think that's a Jozu, if I'm not mistaken, just peeking at the hand. Um, he's got a stacked hand as well, if I'm not mistaken. I saw at least like one blocker in there, but he's going to take the uh, 9k. No trigger. I'm going to end my turn and get another card to hand, going up to four cards in hand. Activating once again Kinemon's effect. It's like you if you don't control their board It's a typical green board that overpowers you if you do control their board Then <laughs> they get to play discounted costs. So now he's deciding you know what to use um, I Was uh, I was just I missed a beat and I wanted to make sure he was playing uh, he was using Kinemon's effect um, So now he's just considering what he wants to put out He's probably got options one of the worst things I can see right now is an Odin because of the pressure. He's not going to die next turn. So now he's going to swing over for six to see what I drop. And we drop a fourth vanilla, so yeah, uh, that, that's just pretty much has to happen. Uh, then he ends up playing Drake and blows it up anyway. A massive, massive swing in momentum. Tapping two for a killer blocker, and then passing. So this is very scary for me. No Moby Dick. Um, we also do not see... Yeah, so we don't have a Moby Dick, and we do not have a, uh, a board to actually capitalize on Moby Dick, so this is looking awful for us. So we're going to swing 6k into life, and he actually is going to block it. Um, well, wait. I think he's contemplating. Either way, I do not believe his hand is very strong in terms of combo power. If he doesn't want to get on a two, he's seen what Whitebeard can do under Moby Dick, and while my field's not set up, he still doesn't want to fall prey to that onslaught. So he thinks about it. And he, con he counters that hand. Um, this time I'm going to play Whitebeard to go up to 8k and potentially set up for my next turn. But I also get to save a little life. So now he's at the point where, yes, he can swing on me, but he also wants to, uh, he also wants to build his board. Because next turn, I might be coming straight for that. He knows I play Jozu's, he knows I play Aces. Um, there could be a turn where I could potentially put him down to a very, very, very low amount of life. Still a healthy, about six cards or so from him. So this is actually powerful. He's going to go up to... He can't do seven, because uh, seven, of course, doesn't get under. Um, Whitebeard's effect is pretty powerful. So this time, he, uh, he preemptively dawns on Killer, which is a little bit of a weird play, because you don't know what could be in life, like... Uh, Lots of white beards don't play things like Jet Pistol that you never know. 
Ah, kid blocker. Let's see what he does here. So basically, never mind. It's not a preemptive. Uh, it's not a preemptive uh, dawn on King, uh, Killer. He just actually walled up. So he chose to put up three blockers instead of actually just doing any damage, which is fair because I'm going to take one life anyway next turn and then be forced to go into this. So this is actually very scary for me. The first thing we're going to do is swing with Whitebeard. And I'm going to blow up Killer so he doesn't get another card. And here I believe he's actually just going to... I would, I would wonder about blocking. But he actually takes the life, and that kind of tells me that he doesn't have like a... He has the 7 drop kit on board, but he doesn't necessarily have a boss card. So we're going to play 3. To play, uh, to play Rakuyo. And then I'm going to swing for 9k. And he's going to block that. I want to set up for the kill next turn. And I'll end my turn by taking a life. So currently, Whitebeard's gonna be very hard to uh, get over. The Okiku's doing, or the Otama's doing nothing, and I have uh, Rakuyo out here to pump next turn. I need to do a combined total of three damage next turn. I have three damage on board, provided I can get through his hand, provided I have a Rusher, and I do believe I have a Jozu in hand. He also knows that no matter what. He's going to be able to get, um, he's going to be able to take, I'm going to take my last life and he only has to get one swing through and I don't have blockers yet, so he knows. So I'm going to hit the guard point to go up to uh, 13k to get over his 12k swing. Next, we get the Yamato to tap the Rakuyo. This is actually a very, very strong effect. Now he's going to swing in the Rakuyo. Um, I have to get this out of the way. So, we drop a Jozu to go up to 6k. And then he's going to end the turn by swinging with, uh, with Drake. And that's going to catch the Radical Beam immediately. I need to keep Rakuyo on board. So putting everything back. Drawing my last pathetic card. Immediately we're gonna play two for the white beard, or for the Moby Dick. Um, putting a Dawn under Rakuyo. So now this is like, my board is automatically gone huge, huge. Um, Rakuyo with a Dawn in him goes to 5k, then he gives all Whitebeard character cards plus 1k that make him, makes him a 6k, then the uh, Moby Dick stage card will make him an 8k. So now we have an 8k Rakuyo ready to come in. We use 2 out of our 10 Dawn. We need to make sure we have enough to go for all of our swings. So um, I'm just explaining to him how everything goes up, making Rakuyo an 8k. And he genuinely knew this was going to happen. That's why he tried his best to get rid of Rakuyo earlier, because he didn't want Rakuyo being on the board with Whitebeard. So I'm going to swing for 8k with Rakuyo. And that is the beginning of the end. He combos up to 9k, dropping most of his hand, but he doesn't need to keep his hand to win next turn. He just needs to actually sustain this board so now I'm going to attempt to swing um, I know I can't kill him at this point the moment he blocked that attack so I need to go for his board so I swung at Whitebeard or I swung with Whitebeard into Drake popping his Ezo um, I also still need to give him cards well I don't want to give him cards but I also 
there's an, almost no point in me holding up his life because that's going to make it harder for me to kill him next turn. So I need to see if I can get through him. So I decided to swing. I don't have any good defense in hand. I have two 2Ks. And I'm not going to use Josu anymore because I can't get through him with the blocker up. So I swing with this because if he puts his other card in the way, he has to go. Now, I did get a card from Life, and I think it actually was a decent card. Let me check. So this time, he just... My hand, I have one in. So he just decides to go for... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so a 12k, and I did draw guard point. So I was able to come up to 13, but he has two more swings left, and that is the game. So real quick, let's have a quick word from our sponsor, and uh, then we'll head into the closing, yeah? So let's talk about Mystic TCG, your one-stop shop for all your TCG needs. On the site, you can buy or pre-order plenty of sealed product for plenty of games. Just make sure though, if you're pre-ordering, to give it three to four months in advance to start looking because sometimes the product is indeed hot, supply and demand, you know? And then if you wanna buy singles, go on tcgplayer.com. There's gonna be a link in the description where you can buy for the best value. And if you want to sell cards or collections, you can message them on their Facebook site so you can get the best bang for your buck on any type of way you wanna buy or sell cards. And then while you're at it, you can use the code UNIXTCG at checkout to get even more of a discount. So hey, what are you waiting for? Check out Mystic TCG today. So that was the conclusion of the game plus a little advert from Mystic TCG. Uh, beyond all of that, it was a pretty good game. I wish I opened a little better because I was kind of struggling on getting started at first. But, you know, you can't always come out on top in that fashion. So when it comes to that, uh, he played well. He was able to out advantage me. And then at the end, it was still kind of close. Like if I didn't die that turn, he was dying next turn. So I respect that. Then on top of that, um, Mystic CCG is still a great place to not only pre-order future content as long as you're in early enough, but you can also go to Facebook, talk to them, sell your collections. Um, you can also go to their TCG player page and buy their stuff. So this is a pretty cool thing. Um, besides that, I hope you guys are entertained with the content. Um, we will be getting more into Dragon Ball Super content. Uh, we got a new set coming out, so that will be very, 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 very fun. Uh, new ban list coming out to talk about soon. And uh, we should be in for a good year of TCGs. I think I'm locked into the Vegas launch event for Battle Spirit Saga, so we'll have a lot of fun stuff to do there too. And um, we just want to keep making the content that you'd like to see. So thank you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it. And we will see you guys in the next installment of this channel. Later.